And in the next section of the video, we want to cover some important policies and procedures. And this is a part of the section that the, the, the training that I don't want you to skip and take easily. Make sure to read the PDF and know all the details. So now instead of just boring you with a bunch of details on how to handle certain steps, we're just gonna go uh, in a very like broad overview and just point out some very important things to know, but I really can't emphasize enough how important it is for you to read through the, um, po the policy portion of it. So number one, uh, punctuality, as we stressed, is very, very important. So arriving to the school, you know, 15 minutes ahead of time, if for some reason you're running, you know, late and as in you still will make to the school um, before the class, but it's not going to be quite 15 minutes, please give us one of us a call and make sure your coordinator and your, you know, your site manager knows exactly what's going on. So when the school calls us, because school is going to start boring while you're not there, you know, we know exactly what, what's happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and another thing that is also very important with us working with kids and food is allergies. We've covered it, um, you know, briefly, but make sure um, we are not and tree nut, peanut free program. So make sure you don't bring anything with nuts containing traces of nut in the school. I cannot emphasize this step enough because this is ultimately how you take care of the kids' safety. You know, even if the kids in your class are not allergic to anything, there might be other kids in the in yeah. school. And then Olga, but what about if you have a student that's allergic to something that isn't nuts? It's a great question. It's something easy to substitute, for example, you're making a banana strawberry smoothie. You can always, and student is allergic to strawberries, you can substitute strawberries with something else. And if it is something more um, harder to accommodate, like, you know, maybe they're lactose intolerant and gluten intolerant, be sure that we will take care of that and we will speak with the parent and find out the best way to accommodate that and we'll give, provide that information to you. But if you're still not sure, just give us a call and we'll give you all the tools of how to manage it, you know, in a very specific case. Great, that's good to know. Yeah, and you know, speaking about food, you know, food handling um, is and food safety is another big issue mm -hmm. working with food. Yes. So you want to make sure you store all the ingredients properly. So if it is required to be refrigerated, if it's something perishable, make sure it's stored in the fridge at the proper temperatures. Yeah, and then when it comes to the cleaning of food, just. Obviously, as part of our I cook rules, even for the kids, the same for you. It's like you wash your hands before handling food and also wash all the fresh fruits and vegetables and just check for any spoilage or any mold on the food as well. Yeah, you want to make sure you, the food that you give to kids is actually safe to eat, you know, check out the expiration mm -hmm. date. And remember, sanitizer, hand sanitizer is not a substitute for washing. And the same thing, you know, uh, when you putting away your placemats, make sure to wash them in a warm and soapy, soapy water. water. Yeah, and the same, disinfecting wipes is not a substitute for washing anything, so remember that. Now that we took care of our punctuality, food allergies, and you know, food safety and food handling, I wanted to talk about um, emergencies. It's not a pleasant topic, you know, nobody wants to think about the worst case scenario, but you can never be prepared now. So when it comes to emergency, you know, read through the guide, it will have some good points and steps to do. But the most important thing is if you're ever in a situation when it's a true emergency and kids' safety is at risk or their well-being is at risk and you don't know how, what to do and how to react to the situation, call 911. They will be their best friend because they're a professional that will guide you through the steps that you need to do to make sure everybody's safety is, you know. Yeah, because that's our key. We just want to make sure the kids and students are safe. Yeah. So definitely just call 911 if there is a severe emergency. Yeah. And then make sure to, regardless of what happens in the classroom, even if it's something really small, somebody, you know, I don't scratch their finger or whatever else, make sure to let us know to communicate this information to us so if parents will be reaching out asking for more details, we know exactly what they're talking about. Yeah, and last but not least, you know, uh, working in a school with kids, child um, abuse and prevention is very important. So. I would say the two easy rules to remember, you should never ever touch uh, kids, there should be no physical contact with children unless it's absolutely necessary to prevent harm for them. But Olga, what about young kid comes in excited running up to you? I get it, yeah. So the easy way they're running up, say high five, you know, it's okay to give them a high five, you know. If you, uh, if you have a really small child and you're walking through them, through the hallway, sometimes they'll need your assistance. So it's a call, okay to hold their hands, you know, but only if it's a true necessity. If you're doing a little circle time, it's okay to yes. sit among kids, you know, or to grab their attention, maybe like a pat on the shoulder, but that's about it, and if it's only if it's necessary. Yeah. Um, no other physical contact really should be, you know, 
allowed with kids. And another thing, you should have no contact with kids outside of the classroom. You know, there might be a situation where parents really love you and they're like, could you babysit for me? <laughs> and you're like, I'm sorry, but you can't because it puts another responsibility and uh, another liability on us. And another thing, um, make sure you um, always with kids and, and your room is visible from outside. Most classrooms mm -hmm. will have windows or doors, um, but if your classroom is completely closed up, make sure to keep your door open throughout the class and never be alone with kids one-on-one -on -one, ever in any situation. If you need to, let's say you assisting them to go to the bathroom, stay out, you know, make sure they bring a body with, the, with them and then stay outside, you know, and wait for them to go to the bathroom. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and worst case scenario, if there will be any allegations of you know any misconduct or inappropriate behavior in the school. We will assist you know police in any investigation they will need, and the person will be suspended from participating in the classes. And you know, um, of course, we want you to behave appropriately in the class, but we also want to protect kids. So make sure to be on the lookout for any um, any signs of abuse in the school. You know, any appropriate behaviors from other sides, because you know, ultimately, we're there to keep keep kids safe. safe. Yeah, I think that's gonna wrap up yeah. our series of videos. You know, um, again, just can't emphasize enough read through the PDFs, use those videos as a reference throughout the, throughout the year if you need to refresh. Um, and yeah, if you need to know any of the management techniques, or just a quick reference tool on what our policies are, and you might find it easier um, to watch some of the videos, but still use the PDF file that we have. Yeah, and the easiest, uh, no, and also if you have any questions ever at any single point, you know, it's something that we didn't cover to the video, you still need clarification, give us a call contact us, you know, we're here to really help you and make sure you have a positive experience in our classes.